Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast. Today we're going to have a discussion on the current political state in Nevada between former Speaker of the Assembly John Asagura and Assemblyman Tom Roberts. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. I grew up in one of the poorest areas of America. My mom struggled to make ends meet, so I saw firsthand how government programs failed to help families like mine. That led me to start a nonprofit that helped thousands of low-income students and empowered female and minority entrepreneurs. I believed in it so much that I lived in my car while I got it off the ground. My name is Drew Johnson and I'm running for Clark County Commission. I've been in poverty and I know what it's like to rise out of it with a hand up, not a hand out. Follow the money. Who's getting rich while making our laws? Let's take a look at what records show about Adam Laxalt. Laxalt owns stock in ExxonMobil and Chevron. And sided with big oil when he was attorney general. Laxalt also owns stock in pharmaceutical companies. And sided with big pharma against a plan lowering drug prices. When they make money, he makes money. It's all true. The real Adam Laxalt. Just selling us out and cashing in. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad a no holds barred political forum? Now from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. Delighted to welcome the former Speaker of the Nevada Assembly, John Osagira, and Assemblyman Tom Roberts of District 13. Pleasure to have you both here. Um, we're taping this uh, going into the election, and things seem to be John. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, both the public and the private polling are showing just about every race so close. Very close. Um, I think this is going to be one of the closest elections we've seen in a long time. I've done a couple of these interviews lately, um, national kind of things where we talk about what we think is going to happen in Nevada because everybody wants to know what's going to happen in Nevada. And boy, it's tough to call. It's really tough to call in a lot of these races. You know what's ironic, and, and I've kind of been arguing about this for years, uh, where people kept saying, oh, it's becoming a bluer, bluer in st uh, state. And, and I've kept thinking, no, as long as Washoe County is Washoe County, it's, the state is staying pretty purple, and it seems like that's become true. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, you know, it seems like it's purple, but it goes to hues of red and, and you know, hues of blue. Uh, I think uh, a majority of Nevadans still have that libertarian feel. They don't want to... Uh, associates themselves with any party, which is why nonpartisans and non-affiliated voter populations are so high. And so I think you're exactly right. Go ahead. I was just going to add to that. I, I think, you know, there's some states, you know, like Georgia that's going to be red, uh, California that's going to be blue. Nevada is not one of those states. It could be a red state. It could be a blue state. It just depends on which way the wind's blowing in Nevada sometimes. Um, and, you know, the, the population has gotten tired of promises made and promises not kept. And, and don't you think that that's the reason why we're seeing so many unaffiliated people these days? Um, it's not that their leanings are different, it's just that they're not happy with the parties. Yeah, I think people are tired of the uh, rancor and the divisiveness of politics these days. You know, uh, when I first got into the legislature, there might have been a dozen partisan bills. And uh, Tom and I were talking about this the other day. Now, 
almost all the bills are partisan and it's really sad, right? And so I think that's one reason. I think that because people are being registered in the, uh, you know, in the DMV and they're registered as nonpartisans, that's driving that number up as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how many of those folks that were registered actually come out and vote. And I think that's how, that's why we don't really know what's going to happen. So you don't even think it's a question of pe people being registered in the wrong place as nonpartisans when they actually might be Republicans or Democrats, but you're concerned they may not even come out and vote despite being registered. Yeah, so you mentioned in the, you know, private and public polling. I saw some polling the other day that said 38% uh, uh, nonpartisans were going to vote. I think that's way high, right? Like, I think that's way high. And so I, I'd be surprised if the nonpartisans came out in those kind of numbers. Um, following up on what John said, um, it seems as though the national policies of the parties are affecting the state legislators uh, rather than uh, the individual states making up their own decisions about things. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll totally agree. Back when I first lobbied, uh, John was a speaker, uh, actually majority leader first time, speaker, speaker the second time when I lobbied for Metro, and I didn't see the divisiveness that you see at the national level. And actually, uh, we were quite proud in Nevada to not be national politics, and our, I think our approval ratings were much better. And over time, I think you've seen that national agenda kind of flow into the state and divide, divide us up. Uh, it, and it, it's disconcerting. It's not the Nevada that I grew up with and, and uh, the legislature that, that I remember. Um, the red wave that was uh, discussed for so long um, turned on the Supreme Court decision, would you say? Uh, I, I think so. I think two things. Um, I think in this election, women, um, how women vote is going to be very important. And that's all women across the board. Uh, Democratic women, Republican women, um, how they vote will determine the outcome of this election. And I do think Hispanic, the Hispanic vote is, is critical in this election. And, you know, I think that the Hispanic vote is leaning a little more to the right. Um, but I think that there's women that don't want somebody making a choice for them also. Well, the his, you know, first of all, the Hispanic vote is not a monolithic vote to begin with. But over the years, it's been seen as a more conservative vote, a religious vote, um, and so the abortion issue would certainly be um, a, a, a topic for them. Um, you know, and do you think the election will pivot on that? Because some are saying there's abortion fatigue. Yeah, well, I believe that when the decision occurred, I, I think you saw a bump in a lot of polls uh, for Democrats in the state uh, that may be waning. And as Republicans continue to pound on the economy, I think that is going, that is the thing that everybody sees every day. Uh, when you go to the pumps, when you go to buy food, you know, things are more expensive. Now, whether you can take that unpopularity of uh, the presidential, uh, you know, the Biden and the, pre and, and the administration in Washington and attach it to Nevada and that resonates here, uh, it remains to be seen. I, I don't think you're gonna have a red wave. I never thought we were gonna have a red wave. People liken us to, well, what happened in Virginia? Well, Virginia isn't Nevada. We have a lot of things that same-day voter registration or same-day voter registration and voting. We have mail-in ballots. We have a lot of things that Virginia did not have, and I don't think that you're going to see the lack of Democrat turnout as you did in Virginia. So there could be a little bump, but I don't think it's going to be a wave. You agree? Well, I think <clears throat> yes, I agree in part. Um, I think the turnout is critically important, as it always is. Who brings out their people is going to be critical I I in this election. So I agree with both the majority of what he said, and I would say whoever brings the people to, the, to vote is going to. Do, do you think that there's a chance of 2014 where one party <coughs> just stays home? I don't think so. Um, I think that uh, I think folks are going to are, are going to come out. <laughs> okay, so you you know we've been sitting here watching TV over the last few days uh, as we've been taping here in Las Vegas, you can't turn on the TV and not see one after the other, after the other, after the other of political advertising. Is any of it breaking through or is it just a lot of noise on both sides? He said, you know, she touched me, he touched me, she touched me, you know. Well, I, I, I can imagine, you know, me, I try to take myself out of it and say, you know, as you're watching these commercials, it's like, is anybody any good, right? Is all they do is just bash everyone. And I think it, it, it basically pulls down the faith that you have in anybody that's, that's running for office. But I think an educated voter realizes what you're seeing there, right? It's politics, you're bashing each other. 
and so you have to look at the positives that come out of those commercials and and in some of those down ticket races uh, where they're not doing commercials at all right when you look at controller uh, treasurer uh, there's a lot there's a lot of commercials for AG I think so you get both of that but some of those down uh, those down ticket races I think if you're getting a message out I think it's gonna resonate you agree yeah I, you know unfortunately Sam um, is on a <laughs> this has always been the case, but negative works, right? Um, and well, so I mean, that actually, that's the question. You know, at a certain point, um, do you go so negative all the time that people just go, I'm not paying attention to any of it? I mean, if you hear a positive message, what's that going to do to you? Well, so <laughs> I think one of the best uh, campaign commercials, maybe a little off topic here, is uh, uh, Zach Conine, state treasurer, uh, mm -hmm. where he goes, okay, scary voice man, <laughs> let me tell you, let's not talk about that, let's talk about some of the right. good, th I think that's one of the best commercials out. So we'll, it'll, we'll see, right? Did that work? Because he took a different approach. He did a little bit, like 10 seconds of negative, and then tried to talk about the positive things he's done. So we'll see. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree, right? Uh, negative does work, but at, a, at some point, people just become skeptical of everything that you hear, right? And so you have to look for those positive messages. And I think th those that can present a track record, what, you know, wherever that may be, like in Zach's uh, point, is the things that he has accomplished as treasurer. And then you look at his opponent and w what they've done in their past. Same at the governor's race, uh, you know, all the races uh, up and down the ticket. I remember back in 2008, I was on a radio show down here. And um, I was, uh, you know, everything was so negative because of the economy. And I was saying that it's not normally the responsibility of the press to report on all the planes landing safely every day. But at this point in time, when things are so bad, maybe we should be doing that. And I got hammered for it. Mm -hmm. but. It seems to me that at this point, when everybody is just beaten up on each other, that giving people a reason to think positively as against what we have, you know, in our own families, let alone, you know, in political races, that maybe some positive news would be helpful. Yeah. Am I just being Pollyanna? No, a little Pollyannish, but um, you know, we we often discuss that in political circles, right? Like, they, you know, whether it's the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. Can we talk about some of the good things we've done, right? And usually we don't because we go to the negative and we talk about the other guy. Um, I'd like to see more of that. I'd love to see a commercial saying, here's all the things that we've accomplished. Uh, what, either side, right? Like, these are the things I've accomplished. Um, but it might be a little Paul <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, I, like when, I, when I, we ran races for the caucus, you know, uh, typically a lot of candidates don't want to go negative if you don't have to. In close races, that's what, that's what you do, right? And so, but I, like I said before, I believe the educated voter sees enough of that on both sides that they're going to be grasping for something that, that's positive that pulls them either way, right? They're just saying negative things about each other because that's politics. But what have they done? And I think that's going to make a difference. If you have, if it's all negative and there's no positive message, I think you're losing out. You got to have a balance. It used to be that the undecided voter, the person who on election day was saying, ah, "I'm not quite sure who I'm going to vote for," was about five percent or less of the electorate. Is that number still the right number that all this advertising is directed at, or is that number bigger? Do you think? Bigger on undecided? No, yeah. I think it's shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's less than 5% now. I think you're all fighting over a very uh, narrow margin of folks. So you're talking of probably well over $100 million being spent in Nevada on that tiny slice. Right. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, and I think, I think they're spending that amount of money too is because of the non-affiliated voter in trying to sway those folks in those elections and and get them to and get them to turn out, but most people are going to vote with their party, right? And so you're right; it's a small percentage. Wow, that's an awful lot of money yeah, to be spending. Um, how do you guys feel about the prices? The New York Times did a major article um, on the pricing of commercials um, and included Las Vegas in that that marketplace. I remember a few weeks ago I was in D.C. and I was talking to a major. Uh, media buyer for political parties and the guy said to me well here's the choice you know I'm telling the client you can spend thirty two thousand dollars on a spot in jeopardy or buy a half a new car <laughs> does that make any sense to you guys that the, the, the cost of you know a spot would normally run for about three hundred and fifty bucks and now it's thirty two thousand dollars 
Yeah, look, Sam, you're in this business, and so you know more about this than I do. Uh, and I don't want to say, you know, people aren't watching your show, because I know that we're going to get wide, <laughs> wide viewership. But, um, you know, I, I don't have cable myself anymore. I do internet TV, right? Uh, YouTube and thank TV. God we're there, so. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. But um, maybe, you know, it, that number is even less, because who's actually watching Jeopardy anymore? Maybe it's the 65 or 55 plus that have cable still, but even folks my age at 54 are cutting the cord and you know getting their news from even myself from Twitter from <laughs> Instagram I, you know I'm kind of embarrassed to say it <laughs> yeah. well it, it is kind of scary because I mean obviously the information that you're receiving there is is not you know necessarily accurate parsed news what, what are your thoughts Tom? well like I agree that not as many people like I don't consume like uh, on cable I'm not spending a lot of my time in uh, 1 to 13 range right on, on cable news unless there's a national sporting event or something like that so those ads are definitely well placed there and it's it's a free economy right it's a market economy they know that uh, these candidates want to get on TV and so they're going to raise the price accordingly uh, it, it is it is what it is. It's uh, it, you know, it's it's uh, it, it is free market, and it certainly is. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with these guys and talk more about this election cycle after this timeout. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Assemblyman Tom Roberts of District 13. John Osagura, who is former speaker of the Nevada Assembly, works now for Strategies 360. Um, so let's uh, move into some of these races. Uh, where do you think we are with the Senate race? Uh, I believe that uh, Cortez Masto, the polling I see, they, they have that... Uh, Fairly, fairly close, uh, actually closer than the governor's race. Uh, and so it's going to be kind of a toss up. But I mean, she's raised a lot of money. Uh, she still has a lot of money left. And so, you know, it, it's going to be tough to call on that one. John? I think that uh, Catherine h hangs on. Um, I think the power of incumbency is strong. I also think the, the fundraising advantage is leans towards her. So I, I think by the skin of her teeth or whatever analogy you want to use, I think she hangs on. You know, it's interesting um, that so many of these top politicians won't do interviews. I mean, and, and even the ones that do do interviews won't do them in the election cycle. Does that concern you that, um, you know, Harry Reid, for example, um, you called him up, asked to do an interview, he always said yes. And he always said, don't, don't tell me what the questions are in advance. Um, 
we don't have that anymore. Yeah, I find it concerning that, that people won't get into, uh, you know, talk to the media or do interviews or debates or anything like that on these topics. Uh, you know, what do you got to hide? And it's difficult if you're on the opposed, the opposition side and your opponent doesn't do those, you know, and then how is it fair? Uh, it's concerning to me. I, 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 like, I like transparency. I like to get a, get a good feel for people. And I think interviews are a great place to do that. You know, uh, Mr. Speaker, when you were Mr. Speaker, you always came on the show. I mean, I never had a problem getting you on there. What, what do you think the issue is now? Well, I, I, I don't want to disparage the news media because there are amazing journalists out there and we should have that discourse in public. However, there are media outlets that are just one side or the other. Um, and so I think there's some nervousness around that, that you're going to be attacked or you're going to be uh, belittled. Um, I think, you know, coming on with you, you know, it's going to be fair, right? Coming on with other people that have been around this uh, state for a long time, it's going to be fair. But there are some outlets that are one-sided um, on both sides. And I think that's, um, a you know, could be attributed to why some people don't want to go all right, let's take another break. We'll come right. right back after this timeout. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with John Osagara. He's the former speaker of the Nevada Assembly and is with Strategies 360, Assemblyman Tom Roberts of District 13. Um, you brought up the governor's race. Uh, give us your thoughts on that. Look, it's, it's very close. If you would have asked me a few weeks ago, uh, I would have said it was uh, the power of incumbency and the fundraising advantage uh, would put uh, Sisolak on top. However, it, there's a feel that, uh, they're, that the, uh, Lombardo's chipping away at that. It's really close to call. I heard some polling today that put the governor up even higher than in the Senate race, which was kind of a surprise to me. Uh, it, it's going to be really too close to call. Well, it was interesting, you know, the governor uh, just a couple of months ago was at $15.5 million. When you think Kenny Gwynn won the state for $3 million, it's right. mind-blowing that it's that much money. It's even higher than that now. Um, Joe Lombardo's recognition in northern Nevada was pretty slim before this all started. Does it surprise you that he's been able to make, uh, that uh, uh, Lombardo's been able to make these kind of inroads? Well, and Sam, you're just talking about the money they've raised, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, so the money that from outside sources. Uh, Democratic it, Governors Association, Republican Governors Association. Absolutely et is, uh, you know, dwarfs what they're spending. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I guess the the uh, commercials are working, right? Like they're getting out there. I, uh, I, I agree with Tom. 
I did something like this a couple weeks ago, and I would have said the Syslac is is definitely in the lead. Now I would say it's much closer. Um, did you think in your lifetime that you would ever see Dina Titus in a tight race in CD1? No, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, in redistricting last time uh, when we did that uh, last year, she was not very happy at the way her district uh, <laughs> to say was, the least. Was, carved, was carved up. I believe she used the word screwed, <laughs> <laughs> the exact term. But uh, look, uh, you know, I, I think Dina's going to pull that off. I mean, it might be close, but uh, I think the registration is not so far out of whack that, uh, that she'll lose that seat. Uh, she's been around a long time. She's pretty savvy. Uh, with campaigns, and uh, I, I think she'll she'll hold that. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, let's uh, hit one other here, uh, which is uh, the Susie Lee uh, April Becker race. Uh, April Becker seems like she's run a pretty strong campaign. Does Susie Lee hang on? I think she does as well. Uh, th though of our congressional races, I would say that's the closest one. Okay, Tom. Uh, I'd say it's the closest one as well. Uh, if you look at both of those ladies uh, on uh, on paper or in, in, in their personalities, man, they're almost identical. Uh, I think that April Becker might pull that one off. All right, that's where we have to leave it for now. Right. But I hope to see both of you in Carson City during session. All right, so Absolutely. please come on Newsmakers then. We will, and we'll be right back. With Nevada's only transplant center and verified burn center, the science is here. With award-winning cardiologist and the state's only dedicated heart failure clinic, the talent is here. With Nevada's most advanced robotic surgery, the technology is here. And with the Silver State's only designated pediatric trauma center, hope is here. All because we are here. UMC. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The 10th Annual Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC. Our community, pro group management, workers comp that works for you. University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. Compassion, accountability, integrity, respect. The Nevada Mining Association, mining a better future for Nevada. And NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.